we are so excited to have the pleasure of the company of the wonderful Jason Estes. Now, I've been following Jason for quite some time. However, we are so excited to be able to collaborate with you today. And so, Jason, I'm going to just say over to you. Awesome. Well, the reason that I really wanted to go live today is because today is an eight-point heart influx. That's a massive thing. Anytime that we have a heart influx, we actually are opening our door and our heart, which allows more hope and allows a lot of things to transfer over if they need to. This particular heart influx was one of the greatest ones because we actually took, uh, there's two bubbles, there's two realities that are currently playing. And at 2 a.m. tonight, one of those timelines that was stuck in this bubble ended up moving over. And so you guys know it from as, as the harmony timeline. But now what happened is this timeline bubble that was, which is another reality and this other reality, so there are two that are parallel, came over. And so now the order timeline and the harmony timeline are working together in this bubble. And it has created something called the unity timeline. And so now you have the unity timeline coming together. This is the ascension timeline, sorry, the unity bubble and the, the uh, chaos bubble. And they're now completely different, but this opportunity has happened. And now we are in this place where it's like, okay, we are now ready. We're beginning to build the platforms. Things are coming together for us to begin to explore this new world that's coming for us. And the beauty of this is we are doing the work. Every day that you wake up in the morning and you maybe feel a little out of it, that's because you've updated you might feel like your body is aching. That's because the energy is running through you. You might feel like you're low on resources. That's because you're working like hundreds of days a day now. So all of this work is being done just by you living. There's this belief that you're supposed to like spend eight hours or nine hours doing one thing. And then like, that's how you heal and all this. Other. It's not that way anymore. Now it's about what's in front of you. And it's never been easier to do what's in front of you than now. There's more resources, there's more things available. This, this foundation is coming together. There are so many groups and platforms coming together to help this new world be born. And it's just an honor to be able to be part of a process that's happening and to see the unity coming together because it's not about me, it's not about them, it's about us. Yes. And that's where we are. We're in a moment where it's about us. And now we are here doing the work. And Humanity is progressing forward. And that's why the world looks like it looks is because we're progressing forward. And so the old and the outdated is coming up to be resolved and looked at. So when you feel overwhelmed and you feel that lack of hope, just take a moment and put your hand on your heart and recenter. And you will notice immediately that you're back, that you are in this place that you've always wanted to be because you are. And for those of you that are in that other bubble right now. In August, that other bubble is gonna be integrated completely and we're gonna be one timeline, one reality. And so we're already headed in that direction. The fear and the struggle and the division that's going on in this world doesn't have as much power as the unity going on in this world, which is why you're seeing these events that are unfolding on the planet that are designed to create chaos and confusion that are leading to unity that are allowing people from different walks of life to come together and see a common point of view. Because as we open our hearts, we begin to see and experience people from their perspective while still being ourselves. And it is in this that we begin to accept others. Now, again, acceptance doesn't mean agreement. You don't have to agree with people to be in unity. In fact, you don't necessarily want to agree with everyone to be in unity because then it'd be a very boring world. Everyone's point of view is valid and amazing. And as we begin to accept their points of view, we can then understand and evolve as a whole. And that's what's happening. So welcome to a brand new world. Absolutely. And you're absolutely right there, Jason, because we really are now at this point where we're able to create this new world from our heart, from our own sort of reality of what we are wanting to experience and really in this now moment we have this opportunity that has just been presented to us and it's unprecedented times that we are currently feeling and experiencing because often we have had many people certainly on the spiritual path that may have been feeling these feelings for some time but there are many people who are brand new to this 
who may be wondering why they're getting those aches and pains. They may be wondering what on earth is going on. Why am I not sleeping? What's happening? And quite honestly, we are here to help. And we only know what we know, but we are here to share everything that we know in order to support those people that are floundering, that are, are sinking, that are drowning in this experience if they're in fear or they're concerned or worried. And we're gonna be able to help you, to support you to find that peace within yourself, to be able to step forward and create a brand new reality where you do feel at peace. It's just such a joy, Jason. And quite honestly, um, there have been so many things that have pulled us all together. And it's so exciting that at this time, we are now finally uniting, collaborating, working together and bringing everyone's little journey, all the knowledge that they've got, those little pieces of the puzzle together in order to be able to help each other. And it is now at this moment that all the labels of humanity are going, where we are as a human race working together. And it's so exciting to see that even mother nature has been healing whilst we've spent this time standing still. And actually it's so exciting to see where this is all going to go. But we know that we can't do it alone. We have to come together. Yeah. So absolutely. thank you for that, Jason. That's brilliant. <clears throat> Anything you want to share, Nicola? Um, absolutely. It is all about the um, heart space coming together and and the observation of those that are in the chaos. Um, yes. that is, um, it's it's to go in and observe um, without judgment which is um, which is quite hard to do when you're in the chaos itself but as we um, transcend through um, our experience and evolution of our soul it's to then observe and to guide and hold space for those around us um, mm -hmm. to, to, to create that sort of sense of guidance um, without forcing them through because they will be ready as and when they're ready and it's just holding that space for them, which is the main thing that I feel is really important. Um, and to share, to share and to collaborate. Um, thank you. And actually, it's, thank you, Nicola, that was brilliant. Um, it's also really important to be really gentle with yourselves mm. because certainly at this time, people have been so used to pushing and pushing and going to work and doing this and doing that. And actually to some degree, for a lot of people that's been taken away and suddenly their version of reality is not the same because they're not able to go to the shops. They're not able to go and watch football. They're not able to do this or do that. And so what you have to do is be really gentle with yourself because often when people experience change, it can cause an awful lot of distortion and concern and worry and fear and panic. And so everybody is experiencing this reality in their own way with their own perception so some people are really really thriving but then we mustn't use judgment for those that are not because everybody is in exactly the perfect space for themselves in this now moment but what's really really important is that you are gentle to yourself and others and we're talking today about it's all about the heart. And quite honestly, it truly is. Start getting out of your head and start thinking through your heart. Mm, and delicious. that will allow you to really soften who you are. Mm. And it's interesting because you mentioned the word judgment. It's actually important that we don't use any judgment for each other in whichever space they are at. And we are realizing that there's an awful lot of distortions, distractions, certainly on the media, definitely. But we have to be very careful. You get to decide what you ingest, mm. whether it's food, the media, social mm. networking, people moaning. If mm. you are not gentle with yourself and listen to when things are too much and you don't step away, you are going to be so stuck in that chaos timeline that, start, that moment of complete and utter craziness, you are never going to find that space to leave and come out of it. Mm. 
So be really ultra gentle. Mm. I think it's really important to know that we go through this process too. Only yes. today, um, I was all afternoon, I was uh, eating chocolate and uh, drinking cups of tea. Um, and it's really important to know that, you know, that we are still going through that too. Okay. And, and I'd like to share actually the way that I actually got out of that myself um, through meditation. And I literally just stuck a load of music on and just started dancing it through. So through body expression, um, grounding my energy and my breath work, I really started to feel the emotion very, very deeply. And it was really important to feel that emotion to its deepest so that there was a quickening of the process so rather than in the past I probably would have been there for about a week feeling really yeah. bad it was it sort of like quickened to about uh, like a couple of hours um, and it was really intense so if you feel that emotion come through really embrace it to its totality and allow yourself to just thrive in that that human existence that human experience and allow it to flow through you that's the key it's to see the emotion for what it is and allow it to go yeah. and I think that's really important thank you Nicola because you're absolutely right you've got to allow it surrender to it because if you keep pushing and shoving it in the cupboard thinking it's going to go away it's just going to stay longer if you allow yourself to feel, and it's okay to feel tired and to rest because we all do it. When our body is telling us, okay, you've had enough, you need to chill out. If you don't listen, it will make you ill so that you have to rest. So start tuning into yourself and listening to what your body needs at that time. And above all, whatever the answer is, it's okay. It's okay to have a rest. It's okay to have chocolate. It's okay to... <laughs> to cry it's okay to need music but whatever you do if you're in that really deep dark space allow it to show you what you need to see and then let it go so Tara is there anything that you wanted to add at this time are there any comments or anything that you wanted to say um just like Nicola said that we are all human and I don't believe that we're ever going to stop going through this process because it's a, uh, we came here to become masters of that darkness and learn to ascend and descend sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes on a hourly basis. But um, all the masters that ever walked this earth, if you look into their story, all of them sat with their darkness and they faced their demons and to be a master of that darkness or the void, we need to do it over and over and over. So um, I just went through a couple of days of that myself, but um, it, it, it is uh, healing to sit with the monster per se and ask it, why are you angry? Why are you sad? What's going on? And learn it, mm. lean into it and learn it until you integrate that to yourself. Mm. And when you do that, you're not only clearing like that emotion, but you're also clearing past timelines and you're, you're clearing past trauma, ancestral trauma, and then you level up. Yeah. That's all I wanted to share. And that's the best bit when you upgrade and then yeah. you can do it all over again, which is amazing. <laughs> it's interesting because you mentioned uh, Masters of the Void and actually, Jason, you do have, is it MTVO? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Masters of the Void Organization is what MTVO stands for. Yeah. Our goal is to just be examples. Like the key to life isn't that I need to teach you all this stuff for us as an organization. The key to life is simply that the world needs examples and we've taken it upon ourselves to be the best examples that we can be. Our mantra is authenticity at all costs. So yes. that's the way that we live our life and it's working out really well so far. That's awesome, because I know you post on Instagram and often you have lots of quotes and things that come up and things that people could read to help them to shift something. And actually, a lot of them have been really relevant just recently. But can you explain how people would use those? So if they followed the MTVO on Instagram, how would they use those to help are you themselves? Talking about, are you talking about the Clear Camp? Yeah. Camp, that one? Yeah. So Clear Commands are fifth dimensional principles that when invoked 
bring up that energy in your field to be resolved. And there are multiple ways because whenever you invoke something, you're actually acknowledging that it exists and that it's present. And since we're infinite beings, everything is always present. So mm -hmm. the moment that we acknowledge its presence and we actually begin to clear out the place where the distortion or the distraction is, that thing, even though it will always be present, is no longer something that's causing a distraction. So for instance, if I were to say anger is present, that's me acknowledging anger as presence, right? And mm -hmm. then I can simply say, uh, anger is now being released and cleared from my field. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing is I'm saying, not only is anger present, but it's also in my field and I can acknowledge that and then let it go and watch it dissolve. And now I'm an example of a space that doesn't have anger in that specific location at that level of access and so on. And so the idea of clear camp initiative is to allow others to become clear camps so that there are more examples of clarity in the world. And it, it's been a huge, huge campaign for several years now. And we're in 2.0 right now, and that will be concluding in August. And we'll most likely, hopefully have the app done by then because we're gonna have a clear camp app that people can just take part in and it will actually keep track of the clear commands and it'll throw up random ones and it'll be, it'll be really fun. Yeah. But that one's not done yet. Uh, apps are extremely expensive and time consuming. So it just takes time to get things as we want to. We are looking forward to releasing that app eventually though. I think it's gonna be a great one because we'll be the ones writing the commands. The reason that clear camp works is because one person becomes an example of the command by acknowledging it and doing the work. And then they're able to post that command. And then that command already has an example. And then the next person does that command and they become an example. So then the next person has two examples and then the next person does that command. And then there's three examples and it just keeps going. And we have thousands of people doing these commands. So what happens is the camp becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And each time that that happens, we begin to see more and more things to clear until eventually we have this giant bubble around us of clarity and we're able to see the game much easier. And that's the whole purpose of the Clear Camp Initiative. I think honestly, it's fantastic. And I know on several occasions I have used those um, commands and they've been really, really useful. And one of the things that we are showing on youcanfoundation.net is when we've used a good example because it's actually helped us and we know that it works, we're going to be sharing those sorts of bits of information. And actually, Jason is one of our collaborators, so we're sharing his posts and bits of information that will help you because we know it is relevant to either this moment or that we've used it in the past and could help you when you are struggling with a particular aspect that you're having difficulty clearing. So Jason, that's amazing. If I now just ask Sherry, if, is there anything that you wanted to add at this time? I just am fascinated with what we were just speaking of. How do we find that Jason? Where is that located at? Oh, it's under MTVO team on Instagram. That's phenomenal. I'm going to totally check that out. I wasn't aware of that. Um, yeah, we, we do our best to get everything that is needed out into the world through our mm -hmm. social media avenues, because it's not about one individual anymore. It's mm -hmm. about us as a team working yes. together to create a better world. And so MTVO team and MTVO's whole perspective is a team. We call ourselves a council of leaders because uh, there is no one leader that is greater than all other leaders. Mm -hmm. It's simply, yes. we are a leader. We're here to build a platform for our members to build their dreams on so that the world has even better examples and more opportunities to play. Because well, in the end, that's, been a game. That's so amazing. And in the same way as you're wanting to share that knowledge and express that and actually for it to grow, we're also wanting to build a community and actually that this is part of what we're wanting to create is an opportunity for those who have maybe learned a lesson in whichever way that is to share that with others so that we can start to expand our knowledge base. And it's fascinating because not all things will work for everybody. And that's the whole point. We're trying to teach people to use discernment and actually you can't really use discernment unless you've tried something out. And then if it doesn't work, then absolutely you can use that to say, yeah, that doesn't work for me. But actually part of this human experience is trying things out. And when you are often in a very low space, you don't know where to turn, come and find youcanfoundation.net or speak to Jason or actually connect to his MTVO team. Because honestly, we are all here working so hard to create these amazing platforms to support you through this. We want you to know you're not alone. 
And actually part of our role is that we've experienced this before this moment. So that in, in the, all of the years of my life, it's been difficult and all my previous past lives, it's been difficult. And I've learned so much over my time. And yet when I added my knowledge to Nicola's knowledge, more knowledge, Sherry's knowledge, more knowledge, Tara's knowledge, more knowledge. And it's now growing and growing more and more exponentially each moment because as our team grows bigger, and this is only a small proportion of them, and there will be a time when we will join all together with our lovely Jason. But what's important is that we are starting to share and unite and collaborate to create a community, a space where it's safe for us to go, oh, I'm having a really bad day. Is this me? Is it the energy? Is it the, is it the moon? Is it the planetary cycle? Is it a karmic cycle? Is it something to do with my soul line? Is it something that I've got to clear for myself and others on a collective level? Because often unraveling that is fascinating. But all you can do is take one step at a time. And actually you can't make a choice if you don't know that there are choices. So here we are presenting choices for you to use your discernment and to decide for yourself and if it works amazing if it doesn't it's okay it might work later so don't totally dismiss something but we know that we have experienced very low lows and very amazing highs in our human experience and that between us somewhere there will be one little golden nugget of information that will get you out of the space that has created despair at this moment in time. And reality is that we are in a very difficult time in human history for very many people. And it's okay because whatever is presenting for you at this moment is what you need to see. So let go of any judgment, step back, take a bit of you know a bigger picture view of what's happening and see if you can unpick why that has presented itself to you because when you do this we can promise you it will get better because as you start to listen to yourself and listen to your heart and you relax and it's okay to feel angry just don't stay there it's okay to be worried but don't stick at it don't take out that worry and anger on others because it's not their fault. And if it is their fault, they were showing you something you needed to look at for yourself. Mm. It's just, honestly, Jason, I have to tell you, life is beautiful at this moment. Whether we're in our lowest lows or our highest highs, it's fascinating. Every now moment is presenting us with new information for us to make new decisions. And what's exciting is this. Now, people know they have to take responsibility for themselves. They have to take that on in themselves. We are no longer blaming anyone else, anything else, any dark energies, any this, that, and the other, any person down the road, or the woman across the road, or this, that, and the other. We have to take responsibility for ourselves because we are in this together. So it's so important to realize that you now are supported. You're supported by us and many, many others. So we are here to help. So now Jason, it's really interesting because I feel like I just want you to go with whatever flows out of you at this moment because we're holding such a beautiful space. I just feel as though whatever comes through is what is needed at this moment. Well, I feel like Sherry was going to say something and then she asked me a question, but then I, I feel like giving her the floor for a little bit. So Who, Tara? Sherry. Go for it, Tara. Oh, did you say Terry or Sherry? Shara? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sherry, it's um, a long day and it's very dark. It's very late. You know, sorry, Sherry. Bless you, darling. It's funny. You should mention that because what has been on my mind lately a lot um, and that a lot of people aren't doing that is so important and I find with my clients and in my life that is so important is listening. So many people are rushing to talk and so many people are rushing to get their thoughts out. They're not listening to the people around them. Mm -hmm. And 
find with me, I like to step back. I like to be the observer. I like to see what's going on. I like to listen and take in. I mean, so many times when we're having conversations, you're hearing what they're saying, but what you're really doing is trying to decide what you're going to say next. So you take yourself out of that space where you can just step back and go, what are they really telling me? What do I really need to hear from this? And in these times, these crazy times that we're going through, I think listening is one of the most important things we can do with our clients, with our friends, with our family. So many people are in strange spaces right now. They're, they're changing and growing. They're going through things they've, they've never experienced. I mean, how many times do you wake up in the morning with equations going through your head because you've been somewhere overnight and, and mm -hmm. people never done that or going mm. i woke up with trigonometry in my head and i haven't done that <laughs> yeah so i find that we really need to take take a step back and really listen and if you find that you're someplace lost or you're feeling off if you really just stop and listen to the people around you you might find that you can find that center that you're really looking for That's so thank you, Jason. Beautiful. Okay. I agree 100% with that. Listening is imperative, and so many people don't do it. I, I do my best to listen to the news these days, and I know that sounds really weird, but I don't watch the news. I listen to it. Like, I have it. It's a video and everything, but I'm, I'm not listening to the news in that way. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not watching the news in that way. I'm listening to it because I really want to understand where the baseline of humanity is. Mm -hmm. and what programs they're being force fed, so to speak. Because there's a lot of things that are coming to light in the news these days. Like I actually was watching Fox News the other day and a reporter acknowledged that they were upset and that they were angry and all of this stuff openly on the news. And I was like, wait, what? This just happened. This is amazing. And then I, I heard how everyone else processed that anger. And it was beautiful to see like the back and forth of it and mm. it was on the news, the news, it was Fox news. Like how, what world did I wake up in that that was possible for an intelligent conversation to occur on a mainstream media news station? It, it blew my mind. And now that same station is putting out more and more content about the programs that are happening in the world. And it's fascinating because they are actually taking the programs and they're deconstructing it so that people don't get stuck in the programs. And I'm, I'm just sitting here like, this, <laughs> this would never have happened ever in my mind. And here we are in a world where things are starting to come up and come out and they're actually helping us deconstruct it. Now I'm not saying all news stations, but so far with Fox, I've been noticing that. And again, I'm not watching and I'm listening to it. So mm -hmm. I'm not about my opinion or my beliefs, I'm simply, observing it from a neutral state that's very important because yeah. if you're triggered by something that's good for you mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like this but that's good for you that means that you have come to actual size where your wound actually is mm -hmm. and now you can deal with it and the cool thing about actual size is when you actually heal your actual size increases mm -hmm. a lot of people forget that your tools are usually given to you when you're in a meditative state but when you get triggered, you don't have access to those tools in the same way. So what you want to do is create the best tool you can in your triggered state and begin to pioneer that narrow pathway in your brain. So the next time you get triggered, you come into that tool until eventually it becomes second in nature to come into that tool. And you begin to actually size faster and faster until eventually your old meditative state is now your new home state. Mm -hmm. And then everything changes, but you can't get there unless you're listening. So the things that used to trigger you or that still trigger you, take time with them. Now, this doesn't mean immerse yourself in them. It means take time with them. Maybe it's a three minute timer that you set for yourself mm -hmm. and you observe something that triggers you and you actually work on it. You maybe write down notes before you do it. So if I get triggered, I will use this technique. And mm -hmm. then you go and you allow yourself mm -hmm. to get into that state of trigger and you get small to your actual size where the wound is and you look at the paper in front of you and you go, oh, that's right, I have access to this tool. And then you mm -hmm. go and you get that tool and you heal that wound and your actual size grows. Mm -hmm. That's what's being asked of us. That's mm -hmm. what it really means to be a master. 
to not be afraid of the triggers, but welcome them and to prepare yourself accordingly. And it's easy. You can do it in a three minute practice. You can do it in a minute practice. If you can't handle more than a minute, that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're less than or more than or anything depending on your time. This isn't the world we live in anymore. We don't live in a world where, oh, I can handle being triggered for six hours. Cool, congratulations. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it only matters that you resolve the trigger, you heal and you expand and become a better example for your fellow human being. Mm. And mm, yeah. we're in a world that is trying to be divisive. It's trying to tell us that one thing is better than another, or this and that. And, and it's not true. We're all human here now. That's mm. it. At the end of the day, that's it. And we have one planet and we get to live on it. And we have a choice of how we handle that. Yeah. That's it. Mm. So find I the think, choice yeah. in each moment mm -hmm. to expand and be a better example for the world. So the world can be a better world for you and for everyone else. Mm. If we can just do that, just prepare for that. Then the world that we are moving into is going to be for far greater than our imagination will ever allow us to even con conceive of. Like it, it's the things that are coming are just beyond what we can handle right now, which is why they're coming and they're not here right now. But as we prepare ourselves for that, as we expand ourselves into who we actually are, when those things finally arrive, we'll receive them fully and completely in absolute gratitude because we'll be worth it and we'll have earned that worth. And when you earn worth, it can never be taken from you. It can only be taken from you if it's inflated because mm -hmm. if you're not really worthy of something, it'll get taken. That's what this is going on right now. If you're truly not worthy of something, be prepared for it to be taken so that you can actually earn that worth so that it can never be taken again. This is what a strong foundation is. I actually just learned this. Uh, the opposite of authentic is called bad faith. If you actually Google it, it, the opposite of it's called bad faith. And it, it's very fascinating. So if you think about that just for a second, if you're not being authentic, you're not actually in faith. And bad faith would be the opposite of the fifth dimension, which is what we're working on because faith is a fifth dimensional principle. And that's what I wrote about earlier today is that we're coming into our butterflies. We're beginning to learn to fly, which is faith. So learning to fly requires us to actually do that work. You don't learn to fly magically. You don't come out of the cocoon and just sit there and then all of a sudden a wind blows you and you're flying perfectly and everything's great. No, the wind blows you, you hit the ground and you go, well, now I gotta wait for the wind to blow again. Maybe I can fly then. Good luck with that. Really, really just good luck with that. Or you can land and then realize, hey, I can maybe fly and then try and you might fall and it doesn't matter because you gave an attempt. The world we're moving into requires us to apply what we know, not just talk about it. Yeah. And that is the beauty of this new world. It's going to require you to apply what you know, which means to gain applied wisdom, which means to actually have value and worth in a world where you are ready to work with others who are, have value and worth. How beautiful is that? Like, Amazing. The fact that we're coming into that. Mm. Yeah, it's that conscious, that conscious act, isn't it? It's that conscious process rather than bumbling along. It's that process of A, B, C, D, E. And, and you know, if you skip, skip the D out, you know, you, you're going to have to go back to C. And it's that process. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to say for all the new people who are with Jason's work, um, Jason, would you uh, explain what the influx energies are, the heart, in, you know, the, the template testings, uh, explain that to those who have never heard of you before okay yeah so the template test is the first to the fifth of every month and all it is is the entire month's energies being created on like a little disc that goes into your system and you process everything and what you can't process you begin to manifest in reality so that you can actually face those triggers that you couldn't accept within yourself so if you are able to process everything in the template test you'll find you have the best month of your life because you have room for your wants to come in instead of just your needs. But if you're unable to process it, it doesn't mean that you're less than again. So for anyone that's listening to this, everyone's process is perfect. If you feel something or you don't feel something, it doesn't make you less than or more than. It's just you learning to be you in a world that took away what you were because you asked it to. So you're gonna learn this process as you go. And it's not a bad thing and it's not a good thing. It's just a thing that is here on earth. So welcome to the game. 
That being said, the point system that I use is referring to data points, which is basically one data point is one day. So if it's an eight point day, that means it's eight times where we are. So right now we're currently at, I have to look this up, 146. Oh, gosh, so we we... 146 days per day that we live. Oh. And on an eight point day, that would be multiplying that by eight. So it is a massive amount, but when it's a influx that is labeled, so it says heart influx, that means that our heart is processing that much energy and information. So that much opportunity to unlock the heart and to meditate on the heart is what's happening. Now, this is a great thing because you usually would have to spend 30 plus years to do what you can do today if you work on your heart. Mm -hmm. That's why we're accelerating. That's why we're going to win. That's why we're moving forward into this new world is because we have the support of time and space on our side, not against us. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to manipulate time greater than we've ever been able to. And our human forms have been prepared for that. Mm -hmm. The only thing we really need to do is stay hydrated. Cell salts mm -hmm. are very helpful. Willard water is very helpful. Miracle soap for your body, extremely helpful. All those things that you can do to support your vessel to handle that translation is imperative because your mind is not going to be able to process at the speed that it's asked to process. It's impossible. Your mind actually stops working around the point of 200 data points. So at that point, everything is just going to start getting fragmented all over the place. But if you have the right resources, your body can run up to a thousand a second, a wow. thousand a second, but you have to yeah. train it. That's mm -hmm. the process that you're getting to work on. And here's the cool thing in February, we actually move into a master line and the unity timeline. So the master lines up here and it runs at a thousand data points a second. So you're actually going to be able to evolve into your ascended mastery within like a matter of days, if you can handle it. And then the entire history of the universe, everything that has ever been and ever will be can be downloaded into you. And you can become an example of that. The last mm -hmm. time this was attempted was in Memoria and it failed. But this time we have that information coming yes. back online within us. So mm -hmm. we're even greater than we were then. We just don't remember it yet. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, by the time that this comes, we will. Yeah. And so as each day progresses, we remember more. Our bodies remember more. We become stronger and we're coming into unity. So not only are we becoming stronger, but we're coming stronger together, which means we're moving at light speeds now. We're actually three years ahead of the plan currently. Yeah. Three years. Yeah. This is awesome. That's how amazing we are as a race of beings. No matter what you're seeing in the world, three years ahead of schedule is proof that we are doing it. We have more support up there than we ever have. We have more support down here than we ever have. And every day that we wake up, there are more of us, not less. So despite what you see in the world, there are more of us every day. The fact that we're able to have these conversations is proof that the game is coming to an end. Yes. Yeah. Years ago, I've been doing this since I was like, 13 years old physically and consciously and physically like as a little boy at four I knew what I was here to do but now in this moment I'm able to finally come out and start sharing this stuff openly mm -hmm. with everyone not just small hidden groups around the world mm -hmm. we're actually at a place where we can come together online on a social yeah. media platform yes. for the world to see and not be taken out of the game or the equation mm -hmm. so people that are new realize yeah. just how magical that is, mm -hmm. how much has happened behind the scenes to get us to this point. That's why when people ask me, they're like, why are you always happy? Why are you always grateful? I'm like, because you have no idea what it was like. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it, this might seem rough to people, but this is, this is like a cakewalk in comparison this to what it was easy. like 10 yeah. years ago. When I first started waking up, my body would dislocate the bones. The energy would be so strong that my bones would dislocate and I would have to go to a chiropractor every three days. I would cry blood out of my eyes because the pineal gland had to detox in sheets and there wasn't any resources available yet. So it would cut my tear ducts open and it would just come right out. The world was very different back then. The energy wasn't ready for our bodies. Our frames didn't even have an example of what was possible. And now we have technology like Activation Station. We have devices like PNRs. We have groups like you can. We have mm -hmm. all of these things that are out here now that say, hey, this technology can support you. I, I mentioned Willard Water, all those things, cell salts. Like we didn't have that back then. 
it mm. wasn't easy at all. And now it is, it's easier than it's ever been. Not to mention just, that's just the physical stuff. Time and right. space is now your ally. Like, yeah. what? Yes. I know. And so that's why I'm always happy is because the hardest part of my existence is already over. And I know that at the very core of me, I'm watching every day more people step forward with their gifts and unlocking more for more people. And mm -hmm. I have this phrase and everything I've ever designed is built on this one phrase. It's a universal law. It's the universal law of freedom. No one is free until each are free and all are freeing each other. Yes. That is what I live by. So if I do anything, it is with that intent in mind. There's nothing that I will do that is designed to be something that will take away freedom from anyone. Mm -hmm. Everything that I design is designed to be open to all, open source, freedom. But there is a safety element to certain things. High level technologies need to be done in a very respected way because you don't realize what you don't realize until you start working with time manipulation. When you work with time manipulation, you can pump 42 years in a single day you know, that can get a bit rough for some people. So mm -hmm. if your bodies aren't trained and you don't have the right resources, it's very rough. So as you progress, remember that spirituality is safe as long as you handle what's in front of you. But if you jump down a rabbit hole that wasn't designed for you, you might not be prepared for what it is. Yeah. That's where teams come in because that team member of yours can say, hey, I can see that you're doing this thing and I just want to check in. Are you okay? Yeah. And you might go, oh, wait, I can actually see that wasn't the thing because all they're going to do is reflect to you something and you can then see within you what was true and what isn't true. But you see, again, when we get triggered, we get small and we get into that wounded area and we can't see what we can't see. That's why teams are so important because they can see you get small and say, hey, I just want you to know I'm here for you. I'm right here right now. And then that reflection is enough to help a small smile from a stranger can break mm -hmm. you out of the deepest level of darkness. Mm -hmm. Remember that when you go out into the world, remember that when you do lives, that everyone that is witnessing you, that everyone that is watching you is watching you because you are something different than them. And whatever you're being an example of is either helping them or hindering their process. There's no middle ground here. Mm -hmm. So use your platforms, use your presence in a way mm -hmm. that helps us all to be free. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely amazing. And actually, it's really important for us as you can foundation.net. We know together we can make a difference. We're not supposed to be doing this alone anymore. And obviously, people can choose to do it on the by themselves. It's absolutely up to them. But know that the choice is that we are here. And we're here to hold space for those people that are wanting to work with us. So it's just incredible. Oh, Jason, this has been fantastic. So I'm just going to check. Tara, are there any comments or any questions that anyone maybe has? I don't think, I don't think that we're live. No, oh, we are. We are. Oh, well, I just stopped Okay, so can good. anyone see if there's any comments or anything that we need to answer? We have a look as well. Bless you as we're just kind of using our <laughs> various devices to, to check to see if anyone needs to ask anything. <laughs> The but thank you so much important. so if we weren't live this whole time it doesn't even matter yeah yeah because mm -hmm. we can just share it as a recorded thing and it will help you mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. i've actually just had a look jason and the um we've actually got a 333 views there you go so as oh, i look 333 three, three. <laughs> perfect. <is> <laughs> perfect okay is there anything else that anyone wants to say just before we move into i was going to ask jason if he had any advice for um those that are just starting this journey or those who are um they're new to all of this and they're, they're constantly in a thinking state of mind and they can't get out of their own mind do you have any tips for those people who to try and get them down into their heart yeah easily so the most important thing you can ever do is bring your divinity into the moment with you if you can do that you can change anything spirituality is not designed to be complex and all these words and all these different languages and all this other stuff that that's not what spirituality is spirituality is the goodness of who you are so my my core foundation the thing that i do and i believe is actually why i, I succeed in life is i am good i do good i have faith and i enjoy the ride so those are the pillars that i work on if i am not good what can i do to become good if I am good, what am I doing to share that goodness with the world? And if I am not in faith, what am I not in faith with? 
And if I am all those things, then it's just time to enjoy the ride. And that's how I live my life. So it's very simple to be spiritual. You work on yourself as best you can. And you remember that the world is perfect as it is. And anything that comes up that tells you it's not is part of your process to deal with. Because until you actually evolve into a state of awareness where you're capable of helping others, you'll find that it's really hard for others to be helped by you. But the moment that you reach this level within yourself, people will come to you naturally and say, hey, there's something different about you. Or, hey, I, you know, I, for some reason, I just feel like telling you this. And it happens naturally because if you look at the world as perfect until they tell you otherwise, then they will tell you otherwise when they're ready. And if you help someone when they're ready, the amazing things are possible. Like you just, you can do so much more than if you try to help someone who's not ready. Yeah. And there's so much yeah. time in each day. So remember that if you are now waking up, the first step that almost every awakened person wants to do is prove that they are awake. Just forget about that step. Just to skip it. It will yeah. save you a lot of heartache along the way. If you are truly waking up, honor yourself, celebrate yourself, and continue to work on yourself and be that example. Because people will take notice when it's time for them to take notice. But I promise you, they are taking notice. Mm -hmm. And it's not about you preaching to them about your ideas and your beliefs. It's about you learning who you are in those things by their example. And their example might not be in resonance with yours. And that's okay. Learn to agree and to disagree in that way, right? Learn to accept their point of view as okay. And you will have grown in your mastery faster than most masters on this planet have. Mm -hmm. Because there is a movement right now on the planet that is dissolving called the illusion of spirituality. And it's about spiritual bypassing. It's about making your point the only right point and telling everyone else their point is wrong. Mm. Don't fall for that trap. Mm -hmm. If someone tells you that they are right and you are wrong, walk away. Or say thank you and then walk away. That's my favorite. Because mm -hmm. it's not about whether you're right or wrong. It's about whether you're you. If you're wrong being you, you're going to learn that. That's called discernment. Mm -hmm. If you're right being you, you're going to learn that. That's called discernment. The greatest gift you will ever get as a spiritual being in this planet earth is discernment and you only get it by making decisions and actions by moving inaction is the most deadly thing for any new spiritual being getting stuck in something and not choosing to move forward because you're afraid that your move might be wrong don't do that bring your divinity into the decision so let's say that you don't know what the answer is quick thing you grab a glass of water or whatever you want to do and say I am committing to drink this water. You've just brought your divinity into the moment by creating a commitment, AKA a future ally, honoring that future ally, bringing it into form, AKA being responsible. And that means you've expanded into a new version of you. And now you're able to see clearer. And if that didn't work, do it another time. You'll be able to see even clearer. Do it another time. You'll be able to see even clearer until eventually you can see another step in front of you. Do that step, commit to it. Do the next step, commit to it. And you'll find that within like a few hours, you're completely out of wherever you were. But here's the thing. Whenever you get triggered, that tool I just gave you might not be available to you. So remember, whatever tool is available to you is perfectly okay. Whatever you're feeling is perfectly okay. If you get reactive and you accidentally yell at someone, that's totally okay too. Mm -hmm. Go back into the moment, apply the tools that you now remember and heal that moment in time and space to come back into presence because until you do that little wound over here in time and space still exists and it will stay there until you resolve it so the sooner that you can go back and clean your footprints up is the better the idea for a master is to walk without footprints to not need to leave footprints is the first and the hardest thing because people want to to acknowledge their own power because for so long they have allowed themselves to be disempowered so when we finally say, hey, you know what? I don't need to have footprints anymore. What I'm doing isn't that important. It's just something that I feel called to do. And I don't need to make anyone know what I feel called to do. I just need to do what I feel called to do. Mm -hmm. The moment you do that, you'll find other masters along the way who are doing the same thing. And you'll have the greatest conversations and collaborations you can ever have. Because in that, you already are free. The moment that you decide to leave a footprint, for any reason whatsoever, you're no longer free. You've now tangled yourself to a moment in time and space that you get to go back to. So remember that to walk without footprints is a master's journey, and you'll notice that other masters will do the same. 
And that's how you can really tell a master apart. Masters are usually very quiet. They don't say a lot. They just sit there and observe because they don't need to say anything because they're already doing what they came to do, which is showing up. That's beautiful. And actually it brings us very closely to, to where we're at because I have to say that this entire experience is becoming incredibly surreal to some degree because essentially we are allowing us to, to just be ourselves. And it has definitely pulled us out of our comfort zones to some degree, putting ourselves out there to, for others. But it's so, so important that we just show up for who we are at the moment that we're in at this flow moment right now. Mm. And so honestly, it's been an amazing conversation. I've really enjoyed it. Is there anything else that anyone wants to add? I just, I just okay. sort of feel really, it's, I just sort of feel at the moment, it's just so beautiful to just hold this space for anybody mm. listening to this now moment. And just to feel this energy that has been created on this um, on this um, live with Jason today, um, and it's beautiful uh, energetically in my perception to um, be amongst all these wonderful people that are um, walking their path in this now moment, um, and just really embracing that that time right now is is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So let's take that moment now. If we just close our eyes, we just take a nice deep breath. And as you just let that breath go, just relax your shoulders. Relax your body in the chair that you're sitting in or however you are presenting yourself. Just let your body relax. Feel your heart, just feel it. Are you aware of it? Does it have a size? Can you feel the edges? Does it feel hot or cold? If you're having difficulty feeling that space, choose your hand that feels right and place it in that space. Just take a deep breath. And as you breathe out, give yourself a moment to feel your heartbeat. That right there is proof that you are here right now. Allow this heart to speak to you. How does it feel? Is it anxious? Is it worried? Is it peaceful? Just tune in. Now as you feel your heart slowing maybe as your deep breaths are calming you down. know that this heart is going to continue beating and that when you listen to this heart space it will never trip you up it will take you out of your head where you are thinking and it will bring you into a much calmer place Now I want you to visualize this space on your chest growing. 
feel it lighting up, allowing it to be in its perfect Take another deep breath as you expand that even further. Now as this white light on your heart starts to grow, allow it to fill other parts of your body. Feel that light just expanding. Filling every part of your chest, of your stomach, of your legs. Allow that white light to just fill your toes and fingers. As that light feels warm and comforting, bring it up to your throat. Let your jaw relax. Take a deep breath in. As the beautiful white light now goes up your face, let your cheeks relax. And it moves up into your forehead. All the way to the tip of your hair. Just sit in this space full of white light. as you remember who you are. As you remember why you're here. As you remember that you just have to be in this moment. Let things that need to come to you just arrive. And as you take a nice deep breath in and out, feel yourself coming back into your body. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. As you now bring yourself back into your chair, into the room that you're sitting in. Slowly shrug your shoulders and just feel lighter and brighter and as you take another deep breath in and out wiggle your body just a little bit and when you are ready very gently open your eyes Anna kõrame nagu siitada tissiata tartu tu korral siis sikia ta tonu mu korral tissiata. Ta kada siit ta kui siumar kada pai kita. Ta tu kui siima poli si. And sometimes it's lovely just to be in the presence of such beautiful souls.
thank you everyone for joining us and thank you Jason for your time and we know how precious that is so thank you really appreciate it thank you for any awesome. last comments um just thank you everyone it was beautiful thank you it really was and Jason I feel like I learned so much from you tonight thank mm. you so much for studying with us it was wonderful mm, thank you that was super yeah. fun